Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Tujin. Welcome to MBT Studios. Today, I'm going to talk about a unit that really got me excited. In fact, it made me sell three components that I never thought I would sell. Um, the unit is the RME ADI-2. Now, you, if you've been around, you've probably heard of this unit. Um, a lot of people like this unit and I wanted to experience it. Now, what is RME? Well, RME is actually a pro audio company. They make a lot of high-end pro audio gear. And the ADI-2 that I have right here is their trickle-down or user-friendly or audiophile-friendly uh, version of their ADI-2 Pro. Now, the difference between this and the Pro is that the Pro has a bit more features. It's, it's, it's very detailed when it comes to features, and everything is XLR. Um, with this, you have a 3.5 millimeter IEM, uh, low power output, a quarter inch uh, headphone out, and pre-outs with regular RCAs and XLR balanced outputs as well. So this unit replaced my DAC, my headphone amp, and my mini DSP. And it did it in this such, in this small package. So why did I switch over to this? Well, this unit altogether has a DAC, it's a preamp, and it also has built-in equalization. Now, what really gets me with this DAC is that it was made with so many features at such an affordable price point, when you think about it. So for me, when I sold my DAC, my headphone output, and my mini DSP, it came out to be a fraction I mean well this came out to be a fraction of that price but this performs really well um, so if you ever looked at audio size reviews this measures really well if you actually care about those measurements and to top it all off it's made by engineers now the manual for this unit is about 80 pages so there's a lot that you can do. In fact, you have all these menu options, which I'll go through or I'll link um, videos that Army actually made to make the process very streamlined and simple, which is amazing because you don't see that with other companies. So the Army has m a multitude of uh, features, uh, different menus. If you look over here, there are about four buttons over here. One is volume, IO, EQ, and setup, and there's menus within menus but what rme did was that they broke it down into a video series about i think four or five videos that helps you set up your unit to your preference so what can this unit do well as i mentioned it's a dac preamp and amplifier for your headphones um, it has three basic outputs the im the headphone out and the pre outs now the cool thing about that is it's each output it has its own settings that you can set and on top of all that you have a remote and obviously I wouldn't be excited about a remote except that it's programmable. So you can actually set uh, buttons to do certain things that like switch between pre-outs. So you don't actually have to reach for your unit to switch from your headphone out to your speaker out or your pre-outs for your speakers or even your IM. And when you have certain settings um, set for each output, you can fine tune the volume for each one. So you're not you know, um, having that anxiety of knowing if your volume is set down before you plug in your IMs after taking out headphones, you're not blasting your ears, stuff like that. There's settings set uh, in between inside this unit that is stored and there's different profiles as well. So um, if you haven't noticed, there's this is a very feature rich unit and uh, I really, really love uh, what they're doing with this unit. Now. The third thing that I replaced was my mini DSP. And the reason I had a mini DSP was to integrate my bookshelf speakers with my subwoofer. And with that, um, what I did was I had a high pass filter to my speakers because my Kef R100s are bookshelf speakers. They can't play bass below 80 hertz really well. So um, to get rid of any of that distortion or um, essentially seamlessly blend in my subwoofer, I would set a high pass filter. Well, I don't need the mini DSP anymore because under the EQ settings, I can set a high pass filter. 
And I mean, there's so much more that you can do. You can play with mono, you can, you can inverse the um, left and right outputs. There's a lot of stuff that you'd normally see in pro audio gear, but it was kind of trickled down. So there's a lot of fun to have with this unit. So obviously this would all be, wouldn't be great if it didn't sound good. If the DAC, you know, was absolute crap or the power wasn't enough. Well, the RME ADI 2 I'll give it to you straight, has a ton of power. In fact, it has a high gain and a low gain mode and it automatically sets um, as you increase the volume. So you get power without any of the associated uh, distortion when you, you know, get to those higher power levels. And with the DAC, it is very neutral. This is more of a tool than something that you can, you know, basically it's, it's, it's not going to colorate the sound, but if you wanted to color the sound, there you go. You have a, you have EQ built in and with headphones, you can set multiple profiles for different headphones. If you wanted to EQ, I'm not a huge fan of EQ. Um, I would only use it as a last resort. I try to find a unit or a headphone that I don't have to touch or, or mess around with. But let's say you have HD 800s, you love the sound stage, you love the imaging that they give, but you find the treble a bit peaky. Now, instead of doing the physical mods like the SDR mod or you know cha changing cables, you could just tone down the treble just a tiny bit and uh, lower those peaks that are, you know, appeared in those headphones. So that's what I'm talking about. This unit, does so much in such a small package and at the price that they sell it for it's an absolute bargain now i need to make um, let you guys know that this is the older revision of the model there is an fs where they i think they believe i believe they upgraded the dac chip but even with this unit itself i'm really happy with it now another deck that i had on hand was the shit gunnier multi-bit so comparing those two i found that the rme is a lot more neutral um, but the gunnier is about uh, it's a bit more holographic and the sound stage is wider. Um, problem is, the Gunnier alone costs the same price as the Army, if not more. So comparing those two isn't an apples to apples comparison. But um, performance wise, I'm not really missing the Gunnier that much. Um, I actually moved it to my system over here, uh, which is connected to my Audio GD amp. Um, but yeah, in my room, this is what I use, the Army ADI-2, and it's an absolute gem. This is my favorite unit to date, like just an audio gear that I could really um, respond to well and, uh, you know, love. So, yeah, I thought I'd make a video on it and let you guys know how I, what my experience is. Let me know what you guys uh um, you know, your thoughts are on this unit because I know I'm not the only one with this unit. And uh, let me know if there's any features that I haven't discussed. I'm going to link some of the videos and uh, some of the, um, the walkthroughs on setting up this unit because talking about it isn't really going to show everything that I can do. Those videos do a really good job. So if you want to learn more about those, the unit, the Army ADI-2, I'll link them in the description down below. So with that being said, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.